Phosphate fertilizer is by far one of the biggest threats to our environment. Not only is it polluting all the lakes and rivers all over this planet, but the EPA has publicly stated that the way they mine and produce the fertilizer is one of the most toxic industries in the United States. Unfortunately, 75% of all the mining in America is done right here in Florida in an area between Orlando and Tampa called Bone Valley. The process of phosphate mining begins with acquiring large parcels of land. They first strip all the vegetation off, including the wetlands, creeks, ponds, underground springs, and even small rivers. The water table in Florida is very shallow, so they must then dewater the whole mining site. Many wells are pounded into the ground and millions of gallons of water is sucked out of the earth beneath the mining site. This is catastrophic for the aquifer. Then they bring in the largest excavators in the world. These things are so big they weigh 8 million pounds. First they dig the topsoil off, but they don't just set it aside so they can put it back on top when they're done. They simply drop it into the deep hole. So what Mother Nature took thousands of years to build the minerals and nutrients in is now 50 feet down where no future tree roots will ever be able to reach it. 10 to 20 feet of topsoil is removed to get to the matrix. That's the grayish layer and that's where the phosphate rock is. The matrix consists of one-third clay, one-third sand, and one-third phosphate rock. Unfortunately, there's uranium, fluoride, and a whole bunch of other unwanted minerals. The matrix is scooped up and dumped into the pit and then blasted with water cannons to break it up to create a slurry so it can be pumped back to the plant in large pipes. They separate the phosphate rock and mix it with sulfuric acid. The acid digests the phosphate rock to make phosphoric acid. The byproduct of this process is called phosphogypsum, and for every one ton of fertilizer, they create five tons of phosphogypsum. This stuff is radioactive, very acidic, and there is so much of it there is no place to dispose of. So they just pile it up and create mountains called phosphogypsum stacks. Lots of building materials are made from gypsum like drywall, but the EPA has declared the gypsum from the Florida mines to be way too radioactive for anything to be made from it. Ten years ago you might have heard of Chinese drywall causing health problems because it was so acidic. I'm only speculating, but my guess is that China's drywall was being made from gypsum from a phosphate mine. On top of the gypsum stacks, they make large ponds, and that's where they store the millions of gallons of toxic water that they create. The water starts out clean, but as they use it, it picks up the contaminants like mercury, chromium, uranium, arsenic, sulfuric acid, and lots of fluoride. Each time they use it, it gets stronger and stronger and more concentrated. This acidic water eats away at the gypsum stack and the limestone layer under it and slowly leaches these chemicals into the ground. And every once in a while, a massive sinkhole will open up right under one of these ponds and drain all the water right into the Florida aquifer. In June of 1994, IMC's New Wales facility had a sinkhole in one of their retention ponds and 80 million gallons of radioactive water went straight into the aquifer. In 1997, the Mulberry Phosphate Plant spilled 56 million gallons of radioactive water right into the Alafaya River, a tributary to the Peace River. For 42 miles, it was a complete dead zone. Every living creature in this beautiful river had been wiped out. The company just filed bankruptcy and the taxpayers were left with the cleanup. The state collected a mere $2.4 million from this company's insurance bond, but they could not decide how to spend the money. So for 16 years, the state did nothing to clean up the mess. Unbelievable. In 2004, after Hurricane Francis whipped up the waves in the pond at the top of the Piney Point gypsum stack near Tampa Bay, it eroded the dike away and 65 million gallons of radioactive water went right into Tampa Bay. You can see the Skyway Bridge from the top of the stack. Once again, the company declared bankruptcy and the taxpayers had to pick up the tab for cleaning it up. And today, it's up to the EPA to maintain the ponds and the gypsum stack forever. The cost of maintaining these stacks runs into the millions. The ponds are lined with a special liner that needs to be maintained and pumps are always moving water around and some of the water needs to be consistently aerated. After the Piney Point spill, the EPA finally opened up an investigation into how the phosphate industry handles their toxic waste 
and after an eight-year investigation, they handed Mosaic, the largest phosphate miner in the world, $1.8 billion fine for misuse of their waste at every one of their phosphate plants. Our government can't even figure out how to spend $2.4 million to clean up one site. How are they ever going to figure out how to spend $1.8 billion to clean up a dozen sites? You can't make this stuff up. Then, in 2016, the mother of all sinkholes opened up under one of Mosaic's largest chips and stacks and 215 million gallons of radioactive water drained right down into the Floridan aquifer. It took the company 17 days before it even alerted the public as to what had happened. You would have thought that this disaster would have been enough for the EPA to shut down this industry, but in the spring of 2017, while four environmental groups were suing the EPA and the DEP trying to stop this mining, the Hardy County Commissioners unanimously issued the death warrants for 40,000 additional acres of land for Mosaic to mine. Not even one commissioner voted against it. That's amazing. Florida law states that these mined areas have to be restored to a beneficial use. This vague definition allows the industry to only restore a small amount of the land. A large portion of the mined areas cannot be restored because that's where they create the clay ponds. These ponds are 40 to 50 feet of solid clay. The surface will eventually dry and become crusty, but the clay underneath will remain soft and unstable, and rainwater will never be able to permeate down through this clay to resupply the aquifer. The only thing that can grow in these ponds are green algae and bacteria. Already a quarter of a million acres of pristine natural habitats have been destroyed by the phosphate industry. It takes about 10 years to complete the mining process on a piece of land, and then they just leave. This land will remain toxic for decades. In the past 60 years, dozens of springs in the Tampa area have all dried up. One of the biggest was Kensington Springs. It was a second magnitude spring, but in 1950, it suddenly stopped flowing. At the same time, there was a major lowering of water levels by the phosphate industry. Today, Kensington Springs Tombstone lies right here in, of all places, Mosaic Peace River Park, located on an old mining site. This spring was a major tourist attraction, and the tombstone reads, thousands of locals and tourists visited over 75 years. This is just one of dozens of springs that have dried up because of the phosphate industry. This spring is gone forever, and it was worth far more than the money that one company made by selling the phosphate out of this site. Reclaimed land is 60 times more radioactive than normal, and studies on animals that graze on reclaimed land often suffer from fluorosis, weakened bones, loose teeth, and catastrophic failures to the thyroid and nervous system. Fertilizer from Florida is shipped to many different countries and is causing environmental disasters all over this planet. Plants can grow without this stuff and have for thousands of years. Many experts are predicting a catastrophic disaster will occur involving these gyps and stacks. I happen to disagree. I believe the disaster has already happened and we just don't know it yet. The Floridan aquifer belongs to all of us and it shouldn't be acceptable that a couple of large corporations can destroy it so they can make a few bucks. We need to demand that our politicians stand up to these corporations and stop them from poisoning our environment and our water supply. Thank you.